Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about Gitia. And this is like Git but with T. <laughs> so this is a service that you can install, run locally. I have downloaded the Windows binary, started it up, did a minimal of a configuration. You got this configuration window when you're installing it, when it asks you what directories it should put, the different data files, the different repositories and so in. But there is not that much uh, setup. And when you are creating your first user, you will get some uh, choices of your setup. But uh, it's very minimal, so you should be up and running quite fastly. And this is available for Macs, Linux and Windows. And this is a service that you can run on your organization so that you have a local Git repository or uh, a central Git repository, but local for your organization. So it, this should be like GitHub or GitLab. So I'm going to compare it to those kind of services. We use GitLab in our organization quite heavily, and I hadn't heard about Gitia until now. I use GitHub a lot because I have open source project that I co collaborate with other people's on, and that's a good place for those kind of projects. But if you have an organization, you want a lean and fast way to co uh, collaborate with your coworkers, maybe this could be a choice for you. So uh, if you come here and you have logged in, I logged in here as Daniel and you can create organizations as well. So you can have different organizations that have different, different repositories, but I have just logged in as a simple user. And this is the dashboard that you get up. It's very like the GitHub dashboard. You have these contributions the past 12 months. You can see that on GitHub as well. And you also have the repository, all your repositories on the uh, right hand side. And then you have some kind of log of what have happened. So right off the bat, I see that this is pretty much a clone of the GitHub functionality or kind of um, appearance, except for that it has uh, the same kind of appearance from a couple of months back. So before uh, Microsoft bought GitHub and they have added a lot. So that's one thing that I see here. Another thing is that I don't really like this font. It's not as readable as you perhaps want it. It could be my system that has bad fonts. I don't know. This could be some system font that they are using, but that could be another font that they could use for better legibility. Because when you're working, you're reading a lot of information on the service. So this font does you a disservice. And I have actually blown this up to 100 and 50% or 200%. So it's much smaller. It's uh, 150 at the moment. So uh, to create more readability, choose a better font. And um, if we look into issues here, I have created one issue. So you can see that this is open here. And if you read the issue, we get into the uh, repo page here. This is very similar to the GitHub experience. You have labels, milestones over here, due dates and dependencies. And if we look at the pull request, it's also very similar to the old GitHub way. Um, and file changed here. GitHub have actually added flags. You can say that I have viewed this, but the review kind of workflow is similar to GitHub, which is very good. If you are used to GitHub, you will feel comfortable using Gitia as well. So that's very good. Um, so this is running. Uh, uh, you can also change languages and so on. It, this is running on Go, so it's very quick and very easy to work with. Uh, the uh, 
standard uh, repository view is very similar to GitHub as well. But you can see here that this interface with buttons and so on are smushed together and perhaps also harder to read. So my main complaint here is that the readability is not uh, very good. Uh, so you have the, sim the normal here, you can look raw, blame, history, edit functionalities here as well. And they are using a standard editor here with a lot of functionality. And you get lines and words down here, which, which is good. Uh, I'm not sure if this is uh, some of the standard kind of editor. Um, I believe that this is uh, a custom editor, but I don't believe so. I think they have reused one of the um, standard ones. Um, now I'm blanking on the names. Uh, MC Edit and there is another one uh, that is very commonly used for this. You also have wiki pages that you can edit and create new ones. Also similar to GitHub. The settings page is um, not that extensive. You have fewer settings here than the GitHub equivalent. And one thing that I noticed when you create a new repository on GitHub, you get to ask what kind of license do you want to run? Do you want to create a, a git ignore file? And what do you want to be in your readme file? But in Gitia, when you create a new GitHub account, a git uh, repository, you only get a empty repository and then you hook that up and need to create all the files yourself. So some of these simplifying functions that you have on GitHub is not available in Gitia. Maybe you don't need them, then that is not an issue for you. And let's see here, we have Git hooks that we can uh, create and work with. And let's see here, in the site administrations, you have a few different maintenance operations you can run. You can remove unactive accounts, remove all repository archives if you are archiving repositories. And you can also remove empty ones, garbage and so on. So there are some administrative tasks that you can run and you also get information about how much available uh, data you have on disk or then you can look into user accounts and organizations, repositories, and so on. You can also have authentication sources. You can add Google Authenticator or something similar. OAuth uh, is also supported in this system. And uh, then you can look at the configuration. And this is something that you can't change here. You actually go, need to find a configuration file and do the configuration changes there. And um, then you have some system notices if there is any problems in the system and some monitoring that runs uh, daily and uh, some things run every 10 minutes if you have mirrors uh, using more uh, set up with multiple GTA in instances you can have actually have mirrors in different location and you can use this as a local one where you push changes to github for instance so that could be another mirroring option um so this is pretty much gitia uh, there isn't that much more to say about it uh, it's similar it's workable it's fast and it doesn't really take much system resources either so uh, if you need to use something locally for your organization inside of your company, for instance, uh, that you have code that are private to your company, this could be a good choice for you to use Gitia. Uh, it's open source, it's on GitHub, so you can download the source, read through the source. You can also be there and help out and create bug reports, pull requests, and talk to the maintainers. And um, yeah, this is what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this video interesting. I hope that you uh, download it and play around a little bit with Gitia and see if that is a good solution for your organization. And if you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues, 
If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. And I really hope to see you in the next video.